Mr. Rabbit, time for another boring uh, activity explanation. Uh, we're in topic five and we've been doing energy labs. Uh, we will be setting up an activity where we have a 300 watt light bulb that is going to shine on two identical containers. Well, they're the same material, they're both aluminum, they're the same size, they're the same volume. Um, the surfaces are different. The black container has a dark rough surface. The shiny sort of silver container has a much smoother surface, plus it is much lighter in color. Now, one thing you'll notice with the diagram is you have to make sure that you set up your two cans the exact same distance away from the bulb. The fact that they're the same distance means that they're going to get the same amount of energy. Okay, The number of joules of energy they receive changes with distance. So if you move them closer, they'd be getting more energy. If you moved them farther away, they'd get less energy. You want both cans to be receiving the exact same amount of energy. Now, re-radiation describes the energy that is given back off by an object. If objects were only receiving and absorbing energy, their temperatures would continue to increase. But most objects sort of stay around the same temperature. So if we were trying to model this, if this was my black can with the thermometer in it, the type of energy it's getting from the light bulb would be short wave visible light. So the black object would be getting, you know, all the colors of the visible spectrum. It's coming from the light bulb, which is really hot, so it's able to radiate very short wave visible light. Now, the can, which, you know, in the diagram is starting at 20 degrees Celsius, at 20 degrees Celsius, the object gives off energy, but the type of energy that it gives off is going to be long wave infrared. Okay, it's just not hot enough to give off visible light. So that energy which is re-emitted, we're going to call the re-radiation. Now, this activity is perfect for illustrating three different conditions. To really understand the temperature of an object, you have to ask yourself how much energy is coming in versus how much energy is going out. Surplus means you have an excess of something. So if something is in a state of energy surplus, that means the absorbed energy is going to be greater than the re-radiated energy. So your object is taking in more joules than it's giving off. All right. You know, at the beginning of the experiment, when we first put the light bulb on for the first 10 minutes, the both cans were actually in a state of energy surplus. How could we see that they were in energy surplus? You know it's an em energy surplus if the temperature increases. Okay. After 10 minutes, we shut the light bulb off. Turning the light bulb off, we didn't just shut it off, we physically removed it. Because even though it's not giving off visible light, light bulbs stay hot, retain their heat for a while, and are going to re-radiate energy back. So we turned it off and we removed it. At that point, both cans went into an energy deficit. If there's an energy deficit, deficit means you don't have a much, enough of something, in an energy deficit, the re-radiated energy is greater than the absorbed energy. So the amount of energy released to the environment is greater than the amount of energy taken in from the environment. You'll know an object is in an energy deficit if you see that the temperature decreases. Now, if we left those two containers in the light long enough, 
and we'll probably do this in class just to show you that it works, you can achieve a state of what's called radiative balance. Okay, radiative balance is an example of a dynamic equilibrium where you have opposite processes balancing each other. So if you reach a radiative balance, that would mean that the absorbed energy would equal the re-radiated energy. And under those conditions, the temperature stays the same. So if something's in radiative balance, it's going to have a constant temperature. All right. Now, for the graph, okay, you need to set up appropriate scales. All right, I do use two different colors to do this. The silver can I did in red, so I'm going to draw, I plot all 20 points, and then I'm going to draw a smooth curve connecting my 20 points. Make sure you don't round things, but you actually estimate and plot each and every point. So even though I labeled it up there with a key, I'm still going to indicate, I'm going to write that this one represents the silver can. All right, you see for the first 10 minutes the temperatures are going up, which means this was radiate uh, energy surplus, and for the next 10 minutes the temperatures were going down, that means it went into a state of energy deficit. Now. The black can was a much darker, rougher surface. You'll see that on this graph, the rate of temperature increase was significantly higher for the black can. Um, you'll also see it's not a constant slope, which means the rate changed. Okay, Near the end, it sort of levels off. And that's probably because it's approaching some type of radiative balance. But the second curve, which I'm doing in pencil, and that I'll label the black can, shows a much greater rate of temperature change. All right, to the data table. Now, this data we obtained using the Vernier probes in 2014, but we can obviously compare this to what we're going to observe in class. You know, physics is physics, this is going to work out. So, 10 minutes the lamp was on, we turn the lamp off, we remove it so it doesn't still radiate energy, and then we watch what happens as the cans cool. All right. It asks you to find the temperature gain in the first 10 minutes. So, the black can started at 17.8, it went up to 62.4, so 4 minus 17.8. There was a net increase. The black can went up by 44.6 degrees Celsius in 10 minutes. Now, if I look at how much energy it lost, it went from 62.4 back down to 30.5, so it went down it dropped 31.9 degrees Celsius. All right, so there was a significantly greater increase in temperature and decrease in temperature for the black can. Looking at the silver can. For the silver can, and that's still on the screen, good, uh, we have 33.0 minus 17.7. The silver can only gained 15.3 degrees Celsius for the first 10 minutes. It went from 33 back down to 24.8 and it only dropped 8.2 degrees Celsius for the last 10 minutes. So when you're looking at this, obviously you see with the black can, the black can was a good absorber. It was a dark, rough surface, so it was able to absorb the energy well. But once you turn the light bulb off, it was a good radiator. Okay, something that heats up rapidly cools down rapidly. 
something that heats slowly, cools slowly. All right, two calculations for the rate of change, one for the black can, one for the silver can. You write the formula, you substitute with units, you solve with units. So down at the bottom, we've got a little bit of math. Make sure you divide it into two columns. For the first 10 minutes, both of these are 10 minutes, so I'm going to put in the 10 minutes. But the black can went up to 62.4. So we actually have the values here. Uh, it went from 17.8 uh, to 62.4. So the black can went up 44.6 degrees Celsius in the first 10 minutes. When I divide by 10, I shift the decimal. 0.46 would round up to 0.5. So the black can showed a rate, this is the average rate, of 4.5 degrees Celsius per minute. Our silver can only went up by 15.3 degrees. Okay, it gained 15.3 degrees in 10 minutes. I divide by 10, so I shift the decimal. This time the 3 does not round up, so this would just be 1.5 degrees Celsius per minute if I was asked to actually, you know, round to the tenths, which is where we normally are going to do. So you have your calculations, your graph should look something like this. Make sure you, you know, label your scales and put appropriate titles and labels. Um, that's, you know, essentially what you need to do. Now, I'm not going to go over every single question, but there are a few questions from the discussions that were important. Um, equal distance means equal energy. Okay, we turn the light away because light bulbs are hot. You know, if I, you know, gave you the light bulb that I've been filming under, I'd burn myself on that. Um, the leveling off of the graphs is, you know, one of the more challenging concepts. If I were to look at the graphs and I drew either can, okay, at the beginning they go up faster, but near the end of the 10 minutes, they tend to level off. For both the black and the silver can, they go up and then they level off. In this area, what's happening is it's approaching a radiative balance. So as the cans get hotter, they re-radiate more energy and there is a smaller energy surplus. They're taking in energy at the same rate, but they're releasing energy at a greater rate. Okay, you could say that's what's happening is they're, they approach radiative balance. If we left it running long enough, and we'll probably do this in class, you could get to a state where the temperature of both cans stays constant even though they're being heated by the light bulbs. Um, characteristics. Make sure when you're talking about the surface, for surface characteristics, you want to identify both the color and the texture. If it's dark in color and rough in texture, they tend to be good absorbers and good radiators. If they're lighter in color and smoother in texture, then they are better at reflecting and they actually absorb less heat energy. So hopefully you got the concepts of absorbers, radiators, energy surplus, energy deficit, radiative balance. I hope this helps. Take care.